Are you a serious dinosaur collector that wants to make better buying decisions? If so, this is the show for you. Welcome to episode 17 of the Dinosaur Review Show. And today we'll be reviewing Diplodocus. As always, George, what is the fossil record on this dinosaur? Extremely well. Um, I've worked on some of their fossils. You find them everywhere. There's mass boneyards of a lot of these Diplodocus in one area, uh, which really supports the theory that they moved in herds. Okay, George, let's get started. We have eight figures to look at today, although some of them are duplicate figures just in different paint schemes. So let's get started with the two figures from Collect A first. All right, well, let's start them both. Now, I, I do have to say that I've had this one before. I think I've had both variants. And my favorite thing about them, the thing that the whole reason why I bought them was their pose. You really don't see a lot of rearing dinosaurs. I just, I love it because it reminds me of Jurassic Park, that first scene where the Brachiosaurus stands on its hind legs, but they can also be posed down, which is pretty neat. Let's start with the head though. The head of this one has a very narrow, very small head. And as you can see, it has a different sort of coloration around the neck than the other one does. The other one's kind of a plain color, but if we move down the neck, they have these ridges, which in past videos, you know, there is no fossil evidence of these dinosaurs having them along their back. But Diplodocus is very famously shown having these, mostly because their neural spines are very, very distinct to that shape. Uh, if we move down to the feet, uh, we do not have that half moon shape. Instead, we have these foot pads, which are very interesting. I haven't seen this before. I guess I never really looked at my figure that closely, but sort of these round foot pads. I'd have to say that isn't very accurate since we re don't really see that shape in their footprints. Going down, I'm happy to say there is a cloaca. That's a win right there. And moving down from the tail, this one is sort of compact as dinosaur tails come because it's leaning all the way back and it kind of goes through this little S shape. I think that this wouldn't really be realistic. I would feel like the tail would be more like that naturally. Following that natural curve, this sort of seems like it got stepped on or its whole weight got pushed onto it. But I do like the color scheme. It's a nice natural greenish brown and yellow. The other color of this one, is a bit grayish with a reddish neck. You could even pair these as a male and female. Typically males are vibrant to impress the ladies, so it's gonna be your male and your female. And yeah, I'd say these are these are pretty nice. I like them. Okay, George, let's take a look at the figure from Mojo next. Wow, this one really pops out at you. Let's start at the head and you can see it's smiling at you. Look at that smile. It's like it's ready for its yearbook picture. And going down the neck, you see that really wrinkled skin, but it's kind of pulled tight. Going down to the bottom, let's look at their feet. They don't have the half moon shape. Instead, they got a full foot pad, which is not consistent with our findings, but the back feet are okay. It doesn't look like there's a cloaca, or maybe I'm just seeing cloacas everywhere. In his dreams. <laughs> I dream of cloacas. <laughs> Going down the neck and to the back and the tail, you see those spines, which again, they did not have, but they're a bit more conservative on this figure, which, you know, I'm willing to accept. And the tail kind of does this little uh, loop around. This loop around is on a horizontal plane instead of a vertical plane, like in the previous figure. It comes to a point, which I really like that. But I will say these colors are bright. They've got a bright yellow, bright neon, and then these white stripes on the back. I got to say this is the most uniquely colored figure that I've seen. Yeah, not my favorite coloring also. Okay, George, let's look at the figure from Safari LTD next. So I've also owned this one before. <laughs> uh, this is a, a classic diplodocid shape. You've got the neck outstretched fully and the tail outstretched fully. Up until the end, you get that little curve. But let's look at the skull. Starting from the head, we see the teeth are kind of sticking out almost like a beak, which I kind of don't like that. I, I like my dinosaurs with lips. And going to the back, though, you start to see those neural spines again. But these, man, these are like needles. They are loud and proud. And they go all the way through. Let's look at the feet. They don't have that sickle shape um, or half moon shape foot pad. The back feet are good. No cloaca, I'm a little disappointed. Looking at the tail, it does that loop-de-loop -loop vertically, which, you know, at least they do it towards the end of the tail. We did see this similarly with the uh, Patasaurus figures in the previous video, but I don't think they would have made a full circle. Maybe if it was horizontal, that's a bit more believable than vertical. 
but yeah, I I honestly do like this figure. Only thing I would change about it would be those spines. They're super tall on this one compared to the other ones. Generally, I'm hearing so far that this is the most inaccurate figure, though. Yeah, you're right. This is the most inaccurate figure so far. If you like the color blue, this is the one for you. <laughs> okay, George, let's look at the figure from Eofauna. All right, this one is a beautiful coffee color. Let's take a look at the head. I already see a big difference with the head compared to the other figures. So a lot of them really want to show that skull shape. But this one, the neck kind of comes in and scoops in the bottom jaw. That's very different from what we've seen so far. So I really like that. It gives Diplodocus a different face. Going down, we see those neural spines as well. And uh, they're very prevalent. Although this guy has a very skinny neck. Now, the Diplodocus is a bit slimmer than the other sauropods that we reviewed, but this is a bit too much for my taste. And the, the legs as well show that. Finally, some half moon shaped uh, foot pads. They are a little chunky, but the shape is there. And the back feet are accurate as well. And there's a cloaca right there. See, it's saying hello. We get the neural spines continue. They increase in size on the back and they increase again on the tail. Look at that, that is a deadly tail. I do like that the curve is natural on the tail. So as far as curvature goes, this one, this one takes the cake so far. But man, those are way too big. Even if it did have them, they, there'd be some sort of tapering. But I do wanna mention the patterning on it is really nice kind of got a little mottled brown with a bit of a lighter cappuccino color. I keep using coffee to compare this, but I like it. What about the osteoderms, George? The osteoderms, very good point. So they have osteoderms running down the sides and in a single file line across the tail. There is no evidence of Diplodocus specifically having them, but other sauropods have have them like Shunosaurus and other Titanosaurus like Alamosaurus would have osteoderms but not this guy. So I would have to take points off for that as well. Would you see osteoderms in rows like this or on other dinosaurs, we've seen them in scattered patterns. Is there any rhyme or reason to which is correct? Uh, they're typically in organized patterns. Um, osteoderm means bone in skin. So they have to follow the skin or the musculature underneath them that then is protected by the sheath of keratin. So these guys, do have that organization that you see in those dinosaurs that I mentioned earlier, but they did not exist in this dinosaur as far as we know. That's consistent with my findings also, George. Yeah, I'm glad we agree. All right, George, we have three figures from Rebor. Which one would you like to get started with? Let's start with the male variant. All right, so this one, I picked it because it has a different color on the crest, which is a little bit of a reddish color right there, right above the nostrils. And it also has its mouth open. And if you looked really closely in there, I hope you guys can see that there. It has teeth. Its mouth does not close. It is just open all the time, but it's pretty cool. The neck has those neural spines running down along the way to the back. And it also has osteoderms, which, man, they really like adding osteoderms and spines to Diplodocus. And if you go further down, we see they go all the way through. So let's turn our figure upside down. And there is our half moon shape feet good thumb claw paint the back feet are accurate as well but does it have a cloaca no it does not oh and i have this figure personally that's a little disappointing i guess i, I just never really look at them specifically this way but i'm glad i do this because now i'll have a better idea one of the cool features about these is that their necks bend and they are poseable so i bent it that way and i can bend it back and this also works for the tail which is pretty cool because if you don't like a loop-de-loop, -loop, like we've been saying, you can undo it. So this is the first of three. This one you said is the male? Yes. And how did you determine that? Well, the crest was a brighter color. And as it goes in the animal kingdom, the males are there to impress the females. So the females have selective choice of their mates and they're after their offspring. The female version does not have the reddish crest and it also has its mouth closed. Let's take a look at the female version, George. Here we are. So it's the same base color as the male, but as you can see, the crest does not have that color and its mouth is also closed, which actually I kind of like the way that looks. It looks a lot more natural. It's not blowing or roaring or hissing. You never know if sauropods would hiss. The rest of the model is pretty consistent with the 
uh, the male also has a bendable tail, bends all the way there and back, and the neck can also bend, which is pretty neat. And it stays in that position, which is my favorite part. Still no cloaca on this figure, though, which is kind of sad because this is the egg layer. Okay, George, let's take a look at the third figure from Rebor, which I believe is the same as the male, simply unpainted. This is kind of cool. It reminds me of like the maquettes that they use for movies right before they paint them, like Jurassic Park. You're right, it is the male version. I think this would be a really good option for... Those of you who really like painting your own dinosaurs, I know I do. You could apply whichever paint scheme you want to this. This is pretty nice. It gave you the option to purchase one without the paint. The details really come out on this. All the individual scales, skin wrinkles, the osteoderms, the claw definition. This is pretty neat. I like that option. Okay, George, mugshot time. Let's take a look at the faces side by side. What's jumping out at you? You know, they all do a very good job at representing the Diplodocus skull, but I will say the really teeny tiny skulls on the Collect A ones aren't my favorite. I know they're limited by their size, but I'm a sucker for detail, and that's something that these guys don't give me. I do like the smile of the of the uh, Mojo one. That one is pr pretty neat, and it's still accurate. Eofauna, though, they really surprised me with how they added more skin and muscle to the neck area leading up to the face. So it makes it look different, even though it's still accurate. The, the Safari Plotticus disappointed me because the teeth are kind of sticking out, which I do not like. And the, the Rebor one, I really like the detail of the teeth being inside the lips, the crest, and everything about it is just well-rounded. So I'd say that's my favorite skull so far. Uh, in second place, I'd put the Eofauna skull. Let's take a look at the skin textures and coloring side by side, George. What's appealing to you? I really like the paint scheme of the Eofauna one. They did a great job with the modeling, the, the stripes, the spots, the different shades as well. I, I really like that paint scheme the most. In second place, I'd pick the gray Collect A one. I just love how subtle the colors are. The creamy underside with the dark gray, light gray, and then the pinkish throat. I just think it's a nice combination. After that, I pick the Rebor model. Very consistent, good scales and stripes. Are they good scales or is it more elf and skinny? They have good scales. In fact, all of these figures have scales on them. It's just some of them have more wrinkles to them. The one with the least wrinkles is actually the Safari one, which is pretty smooth. Okay, George, let's take a look at the critical piece, the tails on these. Oh boy. Now the Rebor tails are poseable which we really like, but which ones are the most scientifically accurate? Eofon is pretty good, but those neural spines or osteoderms, whatever they are on the tip of the tail or the top of the tail, they're not the most accurate there. The curvature of the safari ones are too extreme. It's either between Eofauna and Rebor, mostly because they don't take extremes when it comes to the curvature of the tail, and it tapers off at just the right amount. Okay, George. One question I have for you, though, is we know that all of these companies have paleontologists or experts on their staff to design their models for them. You have consistently said that these models do not have neurospines or osteoderms, but yet every figure we looked at has neurospines and osteoderms. Help me help reconcile my discrepancies that eight experts say they have them and my expert, you, say they don't. Well, they know what sells. And it's cooler to have a dinosaur with spikes on it than a dinosaur that doesn't have spikes on it. Although public opinion is slowly changing towards accepting more scientifically accurate dinosaurs. But one of the first reconstructions of Diplodocus had these spines. So it's imprinted in everyone's idea or memory of what they see as Diplodocus. But that reconstruction was done by a paleontologist. And paleontologists don't always agree. So this is just me disagreeing with probably another paleontologist about these neural spines. But with my work on diplodocids, which is the whole family, including diplodocus, I haven't seen that. And I've seen a lot of backbones. <laughs> okay, George, decision time. Which model is the most scientifically accurate? I would say the Rebor one is the most scientifically accurate. It has the half moon shape that I look for in all the sauropods. Its neural spines aren't as tall or as sharp as the other ones that I've seen. Its skull shape is correct. Its musculature is good. 
just the sheer size and length of it really sells it to me as this is Diplodocus. Diplodocus is known for its long tail, its long neck, how much thinner it is than other sauropods, but at just the right balance. Okay, George, so clearly that's your pick if money is no object. There is a large price discrepancy in these models, though. The Rebor ones are the most expensive. The Eofauna one is half the price of the Rebor. Between Eofauna saving half the money, would you go with that model or would you still stick with the Rebor? I would probably save the money and I would go with the Eofauna one, mostly because all of these figures have their neural spines. If you want a good Diplodocus figure and all of them have neural spines, I would go with the Eofauna one. It's half the price. I really like the paint scheme. It's accurate in all the other areas that I'm looking for. And plus, I think it has a cloaca, whereas the Rebor one does not. So you get some pros, you get some cons. It doesn't have a posable tail or neck, but you get that by paying more. So I would pick the Eofauna one if money was object. And one last question, George. The Collect A model is 10 times less expensive than the Rebor ones. Is that an acceptable model at that low price point? Oh, yeah. It's very acceptable at that price point. In fact, I once had it, so I can attest that I really enjoyed it. There you go. There's something for everybody in the Diplodocus family. That concludes this episode. If you like this episode, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Well, what I know about them is that this one's gray. This one has its mouth closed, and this one has its mouth open. <laughs> those, are, those are my differences.